There are a lot of rumors uh, these days that uh, the pacemaker software could be easily hacked. Is that true or not? It is true that they can be. Um, increasingly recently, the uh, pacemaker companies have taken cybersecurity very seriously and they're working to improve that. It needs a number of quite unusual circumstances to happen before hacking can take place. But then any device, phones, laptops, they can all be hacked. Still, the risk of being hacked into a pacemaker or a defibrillator is extremely low and the risk of not having the treatment is far, far higher. When our patients come to have a pacemaker fitted electively, that is to say not as an emergency, they will have a pre-assessment meeting with our arrhythmia specialist nurses. In our case, Chris is meeting my colleague Simon, who will demonstrate what a pacemaker looks like and will explain what to expect during this medical procedure. Some of the commonly asked questions that we get are how big is the pacemaker? When will the battery need changing? Will it interfere with my mobile phone or other electronic devices? All these questions and others are answered at this meeting. My name is Santosh Nair. I'm a consultant cardiologist at Norfolk and Norwich and James Paget Hospitals and I am an honorary senior lecturer at the University of East Anglia. What I'm going to do is today is I've got a pacing list. We've got four patients on that list. Some of them have had dizzy spells, some of them had blackouts, some of them felt tired. All of them are going to benefit from having a pacemaker implanted. And what I'm hoping today is that one of our patients, called Christopher, will allow us to film him and tell us his story. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Dr. Nair, one of the heart consultants. How are you doing? Um, you've come up today to have a pacemaker put in. So, could you just tell us what symptoms you had beforehand? Well, the day before, I'd probably overdone things a bit. You know, I, I have a little wildfly area in our local churchyard, which I cut, and normally I'd sort of do that over a couple of days, but I thought, oh, everything is right. I'll press on and get it all done, you know, so I over, probably overdid things a bit the day before. And the next um, <coughs> morning, <coughs> I was just sort of walking around out in my greenhouse and looking at the water and food plants, and um, <coughs> I suddenly felt, gosh, I feel dizzy, I'm going to go over. And to my right, there's sort of a compost bin. I thought, if I can just grab hold of that, I should be all right. But I couldn't quite make it before I went over. And on the left-hand side was a glass cold frame with you know, a four-foot sheet of glass there. And I crashed through that. Fortunately, there was plants in pots under there, which broke my fall. But it sort of cut my elbow, grazed a bit of the leg, and um, cut my finger. So I sort of came to and sort of staggered into the house and this was about 8 o'clock in the morning and wife had, on the Sunday morning, my wife hadn't got up then and I sort of called to her, I said, I think I'm in a bit of a trouble and I got a towel and wrapped around me, you know, and she said, yep, we'll, we'll take you to A&E. So I came to A&E and, um, you know, they patched me up and the doctor spoke to me and then after that, I came back again and they put me on a 24-hour um, heart monitor or, or, and then they'd, when they'd read the tape, he said, yeah, the best thing we can do is fit you with a pacemaker. So we'll arrange for you to come in and we'll fit you up. Well, here you are. <laughs> so oh, yes. as you mentioned, that your, the 24-hour tape that you had showed that there are times when your heart rate goes very yes, slowly. Yes, that's right. He said there are sort of times when it really slows down. Although I don't remember this, but my wife said, he said it stopped for four seconds, but I, I, I don't remember him saying that. But there again, you're sort of thinking, gosh, you know, what's going on here? machine is just going to come above you yeah. but it's not going to touch you it's just going to be above your shoulder yeah. to take some pictures okay yeah. you'll be absolutely fine yeah. 
I'm just going to do some shaping, okay? Yeah. So can I get you to turn your head to the right, please? Lovely, okay. <coughs> If you have a pacemaker put in, your heart will never go too slowly. It so won't, we can won't slow me down. It, it won't, you'll never be, go too slow. That would be the good thing. But it, but what it won't do is it won't treat the fast heart rhythms. No. Thank you. And that will allow us to introduce the digoxin back again or other um, heart rate slowing drugs. All right. So that's but the aim of today. Just to control Absolutely. That. Yeah. 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 So putting in a pacemaker is usually straightforward. It takes about three quarters of an hour to an hour. And what we're going to do is under your left collarbone here is give you some anaesthetic. Yeah. And that stings and it goes numb. And I'm going to make a cut in the skin, roughly a couple of inches long. I'm going to make some space under the skin for the generator, which is where the battery and the, the tiny computer that runs the pacemaker is. And then we're going to put one lead into a blood vessel, which is usually under the collarbone, yeah. which is going to run um, around the, to the right side of the heart. Yeah. And then we connect it to the generator and close up. And there are small risks. The risk of a problem is around 2%. And that's the risk of infection or bleeding or puncturing the lung or the heart, or the lead slipping. They're not big risks, and we can treat that if that's an issue. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, we often give sedation, um, and we've decided that we'll give a little bit of sedation to, to help you relax, but it's, it's not a general anaesthetic. Yeah. Okay. Bit of pushing now, okay? Okay. Does that feel okay? Yeah. All right, bit of pushing now. So I'm just making a cut in the skin. After numbing the area with anaesthetic, I look for a vein. Veins are connected to the heart, and so once I have found a vein, I can put a pacemaker lead into that blood vessel and it will follow the path of the vein back down to the heart. This is a pacemaker lead. We fix pacemaker leads into the wall of the heart, either by a hook or a screw. In Christopher's case, the lead I'm going to be using has got a screw. So we're looking for an optimal position, optimal pacing values. I haven't quite got that yet, so we need to move it to a, a better position. That, what we're doing there is making sure we can see the screw has come out, that, it's, that the lead is, is fixed. And, and that's what I'm looking for, and I'm happy with that. Oh, that looks better, doesn't it? Okay. We've still got a nice EGM as well. Excellent. Okay, let's try that then. What we want a pacing lead to be able to do is to be able to sense electrical activity in the heart and also, if there is no electrical activity, to be able to pace the heart at, a, at as low battery drain as possible. And initially I wasn't happy with where the, um, the, the leads were in terms of those values, but now it's much, much better, so I'm happy with those values now. How are you feeling, Chris? We've got the lead in, so what I'm going to do is sew it in now and then we connect it to the battery and then we close up, okay? This particular one's smaller than a matchbox. And what we can do is connect the leads to the generator. This is mainly battery, but it's also got a tiny microcomputer inside that helps run the pacemaker. Okay, Chris, you're going to feel a little bit of pushing now as we put the battery in. Okay. We are now at the end of the case. Everything has gone well. We have the lead in a nice position and that's important because it's going, it means it's going to drain as little energy from the battery as possible. And what I'm going to do now is close up the skin and um, the tissues and then Christopher will come off the table and tomorrow he will have a chest x-ray and a pacing check and all being well he'll go home. Well done, you did really well. Are you feeling okay? We'll take get you off the table very shortly. Okay. This heart has been in a regular rhythm called atrial fibrillation. It's a very common rhythm disturbance. And um, that can go both slow and fast, which it did in Chris's case. The fast heart rhythms we treat with drugs to slow them down, but the slow heart rhythms can only be treated with a pacemaker. In that six week period, we ask patients to be careful with their uh, left arm. That's where the pacemaker has been put in, just because um, there is a small risk of dislodgement. <laughs> yes, thanks ever so much. And yeah. what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll tee up your pacing check yeah. with a clinic appointment with me. Yeah. Okay, so we do both things at the same time. Today, Christopher's come up for his six-week pacing check and he's going to see the cardiac physiologist. Hello, my name is Andrea. I'm the cardiac physiologist that looks after pacemakers. That looks like that's healed up very nicely. The next thing I'm going to do 
is pop my pacemaker programmer over the top of your pacemaker and it just communicates so it tells me what's been happening with your pacemaker and what I'm going to do now is just make your heart go a little bit faster but you shouldn't be aware of what I'm doing everything looks very very good, good. and we do not need to see you for another six months good. and if everything's okay at six months we don't need to see you anymore other than yearly hello Hello. Nice to see you. How are you? Well, not too bad, I suppose. We're still here. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I'm sort of back swimming and things like that. Some seeds gardening. So doing all your daily activities. And oh yes, yes, everything. That... Have there any issues at all? No, I mean I'm just a little fun. <laughs> Bump there, that's what's just like. Yeah, okay. Easier said than done. Easier said than done. Which one? Okay. Let's get you through. Okay.